We have created for you a series of five episodes about leadership styles. In our episode number one and two, we have already explored the trait theory and the behaviorist one. We are now going to explore, in our episode number three, the contingency or situational theory. The third approach to leadership is called the contingency or situational school, which is further categorized into four, namely Fiddler's contingency model, the Hershey Blanchard model of leadership, Tannenbaum and Schmidt's leadership continuum, and others' action centered leadership model. Fiddler's contingency model. According to this theory, a leader's style is measured by a scale called Least Preferred Coworker Scale, LPC. People who are filling out this survey are asking to think of a person who is their least preferred coworker. Different people can be effective in different situations. The LPC score is aching to a personality trait and is not likely to change. Instead, placing the right people in the right situation or changing the situation to suit an individual is important to increase the leadership's effectiveness. These situational variable are leader-member relations, or how well manager and their subordinates get along, task structure, complexity of the task to accomplish it, and position power how much authority the organization has delegated upon the manager to accomplish the task and to direct, reward, or punish employees for not being able to deliver. The Herse Blanchard model of leadership. The second contingency or situational approach to leadership is the Herse Blanchard model of leadership. This approach posits that the leadership style of the manager is determined by the readiness or developmental level of the subordinates. There are four leadership styles in this particular approach, namely directing, coaching, supporting and delegating. In the directing leadership style, the manager provides clear and specific instructions to subordinates. This approach is best suited for subordinates who have a low follower readiness level. Directive leaders provide specific directions to their employees. They lead employees by clarifying role expectations, setting schedules, and making sure that employees know what to do on a given work day. In the coaching leadership style, the manager encourages a two-way communication line with the subordinates while building their confidence and motivation level to an optimal point. This approach is best suited for subordinates with a moderate follower readiness level. Coaching leaders set goals for employees and encourage them to reach their goals. Their style challenges employees and focuses their attention on work-related goals. Supporting. In the supporting leadership style, the manager and subordinates share the responsibility for decision-making. In addition, the manager leads with a non-directive approach. A subordinate with a moderate follower readiness level is suited for this particular approach. Supportive leaders provide emotional support to employees. They treat employees well, care about them on a personal level, and they are encouraging. Supporting leaders are predicted to be effective when employees are under a lot of stress or performing boring, repetitive jobs. Lastly, in the delegating leadership style, the manager is able to authorize subordinates a particular task because of their competence, motivation, and sense of responsibility. This approach is best suited for organizations with subordinates with a high follower readiness level. Delegating leaders make sure that employees are involved in the making of important decisions. Participative leadership may be more effective when employees have high levels of ability and when the decisions are made personally relevant to them. 
Let's talk about the Tannenbaum and Schmidt's leadership continuum now. Here, the manager's leadership style is classified as either being autocratic or democratic and consultative or persuasive. In an autocratic or telling style, the manager makes decisions and would expect subordinates to carry them out blindly, without questions. In a democratic or joining style, on the other hand, the manager would open up matters of the organization to subordinates and solicit their opinion and encourage discussion about it, moderating rather than directing it as the collective decision emerges. In a persuasive or selling style, the manager makes the decision for the organization without any consensus from subordinates. The manager assumes that they will be motivated nonetheless if persuaded that the decision made is good and the right one. Conversely, in a consultative or consulting style, the manager confers and involves subordinates in the process before making decisions, although the responsibility borne out of it is still the former's. The last contingency or situational approach to leadership is Ader's action, centered leadership model. In this leadership style, the manager is concentrated on accomplishing the job by structuring the task, task structuring, or by defining, planning, allocating resources, and adjusting the plan via performance feedback, supporting, attending to their concerns and developing them, and reviewing, recognizing, and praising those assigned to it, coordinating, ensuring individual members' coordination and delegating leadership, and cultivating, team building and developing the team, the team until the accomplishment of the task. What are the benefits and the limits of the contingency or situational approach to leadership? Contingency theory has broadened the scope of leadership understanding from a focus on a single, best type of leadership, to emphasizing the importance of a leadership style and the demands of different situations. Contingency theory has also been proved to have predictive powers in determining the type of leadership that is most likely to be effective in particular contexts. Contingency theory supplies data on leadership styles that could be useful to organizations in developing leadership profiles for human resource planning. Some of the limits are that the characteristics of the organizations in the respective studies qualify the findings, but this may still differ when compared with other organizations. The suggestion of the approach is very simple, that is, Managers should do according to the needs of the situation. However, when put into practice, this becomes very complex. Contingency approach is basically reactive in nature. It nearly suggests what managers can do in a given situation. Contingency theory, although having several strengths, generally falls short in trying to explain why leaders with certain leadership styles are effective in some situations but not in others. This type of approach will be helpful towards organizations focusing on different divisions and branches, such as political sector or multi-level companies. In fact, contingency and situational approach to leadership theories suggest that there is no one best way of leading and that a leadership style is effective in one situation but may not be successful in others. Thank you for watching and listening this video. This mini-series is composed of five episodes and you can follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube and our website is www.cara.com.